morning everyone happy weekend it's a pretty gloomy day so it's a perfect day to do some sewing and i hope you'll enjoy following along first i'll go make some breakfast and a nice cup of coffee and then we'll head on into it quickly tell you what the project is for today. A while ago a friend of mine asked if I could maybe make her a pottery apron. It's one of those aprons that kind of splits open so you protect your legs when you're sitting at a pottery wheel. So after some googling I drafted the pattern. I kind of just based this on her measurements and I tried it out out of just some thrifted fabric. It's not really finished at all or anything. Came over, she tried it on and we made some notes on what would be different, what would be better. Then I went on a hunt for a good fabric for the actual apron. After a while, I did find a beautiful fabric on Vinted. It's a twill. If you have been following me on here or on Instagram, you know that this is a color that I've been loving. I made a jumpsuit out of this. I made pants out of this. The pants I'm wearing right now are basically that color. Anyway, I love this color. It's a bit more lightweight than this heavy denim. I made some notes so I knew what the measurements were like. I just wrote everything down so I know what to do. My first step is to cut out the fabric pieces and then hopefully today I will also get sewing a little bit. Um, I will start off by ironing as much as I can before starting to sew. In patterns you buy, you will often have to press here and there and then sew a bit more and then press again and then sew a bit more. I try to bundle as much of the same activity into one go so I don't have to constantly warm up my iron. All right, so I'm done with ironing. My back is killing me. And now we will finally start sewing. I'm starting off with the leg panels. I'm just doing a double fold and I will top stitch in two lines on top. I'm using this little foot because it's quite a long straight line and I want it to be as neat as possible. I have no idea what it's officially called. It came with the sewing machine, so it's over 30 years old. It has a gauge. Um, next to it and it makes it so you can align your fabric really nicely when you're doing a long straight line You can turn on the little wheel and then it gets wider or more narrow You don't need this at all. You can just use your normal foot Usually I would do this with my normal foot, but because I'm doing it for someone else. I want it to be extra neat
So as you can see, there's two really neat lines of stitching. This is the inside of the panel and it's also like very nice and neat. The stitching super close to the edge is not really necessary, but I feel like it looks a little bit more sturdy, a bit more finished, especially for a thing like an apron. I do like the style of it. Okay, with the two panels, already it's time to move on to the bib now because this fabric is a little bit thinner than what i would have hoped i have decided to line the bib so that the inside is a little bit reinforced also it's just a nice detail to have a nice contrasting fabric on the inside and i've settled for this beautiful uh, gray taupey uh, linen. It's actually a linen that the friend who I'm making this for gave me because she didn't really have a use for it anymore. So I've decided to use this linen and I think it works really nicely with the green fabric. I thought about using a print, like a fun floral print, but then I thought this is also nice and clean and minimalistic. I will sew all around to attach the lining to the front of a fabric with uh, right sides together, leaving the bottom open, which is important because I have to be able to turn it inside out after it. Originally, I wanted to make a little front pocket, but after talking to my friend, she said, well, you kind of get clay everywhere and the more pockets you have, the more clay gets stuck. So we opted to leave out the front pocket also because things would just fly out anyway um, when you're hunched over. So no pocket in the front. I will however stitch down a seam just in the front like this in order for the lining and the main fabric to kind of lie flush. I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start by just sewing around um, all the edges. All right, it's all turned inside out and I made the points nice and pointy. Now I will top stitch all around just like I did before. Some people out there will understand my joy when I found this gray bobbin. It's really the end of a bobbin. I hope it will be enough. But look at this color matching. It's basically invisible. <laughs> I'm sure someone out there will understand my joy when I found this. Uh, again, I hope it will be enough. So I will have the green thread on top and then this grayish, topish color in the bobbin. And um, it will be nice and neat. I'm adding the special foot again and increasing my stitch length so that the stitches are a bit more even. Okay, the top stitching is done and again, I just think it looks really neat. And on the other side, it also looks quite neat and almost invisible, which 
we love. Now, that gray mystery thread that I found was obviously not the best quality because the thread kept breaking. So I have a few spots along the seam where threads were breaking. That's okay. I'm kind of unpicking now where I can so I can clean it up a little bit. But thankfully, it's not too visible on the right side of the fabric. So let that be a reminder that good quality thread is really, really, really worth the investment. In the beginning, I started sewing. I did use some budget threads and I did have so much breakage in my threads and my machine was always very fussy. Yeah, invest in good quality threads. I almost exclusively use Gutemann threads, sometimes also Mettler. I almost never have problems with breakage or jamming up my machine, so do invest in good quality threads. It will spare you so much frustration. <laughs> All right, so I've switched back to my normal sewing foot. Now I will make one seam down the center front of the bib to attach the main fabric and the lining to one another to make it extra sturdy. Oh my god, I exactly finished the bobbin when I finished my front seam. This much thread is left in the bobbin. So I couldn't have estimated it more correctly. We love a good coincidence. Yeah, I won this game of bobbin chicken. <laughs> and now the front bib is basically ready. Little tip to finish off the seam line. I want to have this leftover thread from the start of my seam on the back side of my bib. I pull lightly on the bobbin thread and then you can see the back loop of the top thread peeking through. Once it's peeking through you kind of poke your seam ripper in and you pull your thread to the other side. And afterwards you can knot both threads together and cut them off nicely so they are basically invisible. Otherwise you have the risk that it will start unraveling, which we don't want. So that's how you can make sure that the threads are secure, but also kind of invisible. Okay, so it's starting to take shape and I have to start thinking about how I will assemble everything so that it comes together nicely. So I have moved to the floor <laughs> to kind of lay out everything that I have and to see how I will proceed. Hello, welcome to the floor. First of all, we have the bib and then the leg pieces here. And then I have the long strap and I think I will use the band to kind of enclose all the raw edges of the bib and the leg parts. I'm kind of thinking how to do this because it might be a bit crazy on the layers. <laughs> so I'll have to see if that's possible. But I think that seems to be the most clean way to finish it. And it's kind of nice to have like a continuous line, I think. My second thing I have to think about is the pocket and the little towel strap. So if I can find it, simple little strap on the waist so that she can have like a towel, something to quickly wash her hands on. That also needs to go on the waistline. So that's another two layers on top. And I do want to add one pocket so she can have some tools or maybe her phone. So I have my work cut out for me. I'll kind of try out a few things and hopefully it will all work out and my machine won't be too angry at me for all the layers. In any case, I will start by making the little towel hanger so that I can catch it in the seam of the waistband. So the original side pocket I had in mind was going to be a horizontal pocket, but then I realized because you will be sitting down, the horizontal pocket might not be secure enough. So I'm redrawing a new pocket and settling on 20 centimeters wide. I don't want it too deep because then it will just be very impractical when you're trying to reach for stuff. So there I estimated 25 centimeters deep. So I'm measuring it, making sure it's correct on both sides. 
Now there's a question of seam allowance because the top of the pocket I want to do a double fold so the raw edge is nicely enclosed. So I'm adding two centimeters on the top. So this is now my new pocket and it will go on the side so that it's kind of out of the way and not in the clay zone. <laughs> And the label is on. I really like adding these little touches. Um, I always feel like it makes it a little bit more personal. And yeah, it's true. I've loved making this project and I have had a lot of coffee today. <laughs> I'm loving that it's starting to take shape. But the next step is to add the pocket to the front of the leg panels. As you can see, I have a little yellow piece of paper folded up on the back of my presser foot and that's because this seam is quite bulky and if I don't have the little paper, let me take it away, you can see that the presser foot is angled up which makes the stitches much less even. So that's why I add this little guy so that the presser foot is nice and parallel and then the stitches go much smoother. To make the pocket a little bit more sturdy, I'm going to add some tacking, I think it's called. It is basically a very narrow zigzag stitch that will make the seam a little bit more sturdy. You'll see this a lot on denim and pants, places where you'll put a bit more tension, for example pockets or the fly. So I'm going to add it on the sides of the top pocket. You can see it here, on the back you can see it even better. Like it's reinforced with uh, just a narrow zigzag stitch. All right, back to the assembly line. This strap needs to be sewn in and then there will be an overlap of about 25 centimeters. I will start by basting together the two leg panels so that they cannot shift around when I'm sewing all of the layers together. Because remember, I have the bib, I have the two leg panels, I have this little guy, and then I have to somehow attach this whole thing. So I don't want things to go shifting and do their own thing. And what I will also do to make it extra secure is to baste on the bottom as well so that they cannot start flapping open and stuff. Let's go baste it on the machine. As you can see, the two leg panels are basted to each other and then I also basted the strap. Now it's time to start assembling the bib to the pant panels and the strap. It's all pinned and ready to be sewn, but before I'm taking a little bit of a snack break because whenever I sew, I kind of forget to eat and drink and do all of the basic human things. So I'm taking a break for some snacks. During my little pancake break, I wrote down the steps so next time I don't have to rethink everything from scratch um, all over again.
so it's all uh, sewn together. You have the bib, the strap, and then the leg parts. When you fold it over, it looks really, really neat, which was the um, hope. Um, so now I'm going to fold it again and then top stitch down onto the bib. Afterwards, it just continues on to be the strap by itself. Hopefully it will make sense a bit more later. So as I had feared, there are just so many layers here and it will just end up being super bulky. So before I sew this down, I will go into the seam allowance and kind of like snip where I can to reduce the bulk of the seam allowance. I thought I would finish this project without breaking a needle, but unfortunately a needle has been broken. Rest in peace. I'm not really surprised. Um, I was going through a lot of layers and um, yeah, the needle wasn't happy about it. So luckily I have more needles. Um, but yeah, be careful when you sew a lot of layers. Look at this. The waistband is on and the straps Yep, have been sewn. From the outside it looks quite neat. It's a bit wobbly over here but that was to be expected with like these handles and I think once it's worn it will really not be visible at all. really like that this center seam is so well aligned. On the inside is not fully neat yet so I will clean up these things and I think I will do these things by hand so that it's invisible on the other side because I really do like that this is just like one continuous line. So yeah, now it's detail work on the inside. Because I'm doing all of this by hand, it will actually take quite a long time. But that's okay, it's nice to slow down and get some hand sewing done. All right, I have cleaned up all the insides and hand sewn some of the last bits that I couldn't get with my sewing machine. And now I'm hemming the bottom. After doing that, the only thing I have left is the neck strap and the holes for the neck straps. But let's start with hemming the bottom of the pants. Before sewing this down, I wanted to quickly check if the hem was nice and even. And look at this super satisfying line. Ready for sewing. I just sewed the necktie, which will come right here. Now on the trial version, I made simple buttonholes and then threaded the strap through and made a knot. Works perfectly fine, but I'm kind of thinking of ways to make it look a little bit more polished and a little bit more professional. And then I thought I could add an eyelet in each corner. This is what I mean. It would have this metal ring to reinforce the hole. Adding these is a little bit nerve-wracking because uh, I haven't done this very often and I'm afraid to ruin my fabric. <laughs> but I feel like I kind of just have to go for it and try it out. Let's hope this works. So basically you make a hole in your fabric, you insert the piece with the tail and then you add 
the other part on the other side and then you apply pressure. Oh my god, I freaking love it! I'm so glad I decided to do this. It looks really polished and I really like the look with the knot as well. Oh my god, I love it so much. And this is what it looks like on. I'm really, really happy with the decision to add the eyelets. I will give you a full debrief on this whole project tomorrow because it's kind of late. So I will leave you for now. I will see you tomorrow for the full debrief, uh, which is just a second for you. Good morning, I freshly showered and I just hung up the laundry. Today I want to show you the final result of the apron, but before we do that I wanted to chat to you about yesterday's experience and we will be cleaning up my desk <laughs> as we do that because honestly um, whenever I sew I kind of create a mess. So yesterday I was so happy to be able to sew the whole day. Uh, it doesn't happen very often. It's just nice to be able to kind of get lost in a project. Obviously that's not very realistic to do every week, but every once in a while, you know, just not taking anyone else in account. I had told my partner I will be sewing the whole day. You do you, I do me. <laughs> and um, yeah, that was just kind of nice. As far as sewing for other people, I don't sew a whole lot for other people and there's a simple reason for that. One, I don't have that much time to sew anyway, so when I do have time, honestly, I prefer sewing for myself. Two, it's much easier to sew for yourself because you can try things on, you don't have to tailor a project to a body you don't really know. I have very high expectations when I sew for other people, which is fine. I think a lot of people are like that. That also brings a little bit of stress and a bit of pressure which I don't always want. <laughs> uh, so when my friend came with the question, she definitely left it as an open question. And then I told her I would love to try it, but only if there's no time limit and I'll just try it. Like, like no guarantee it will work. And so in January, I made that trial version that I showed you yesterday. And all of a sudden I saw this beautiful green fabric. So I was like, okay, well, this is this is the moment. This doesn't mean that I will start sewing for other people all the time, definitely not. So yeah, that was my thoughts of yesterday. I loved sewing the whole day. I loved um, getting lost in the project and really taking my time for it, not feeling too much time pressure. Um, and it had been a while, so really nice. This is the apron in all its glory. It's fully finished. Um, I added the little tag, so a bit of hand sewing there. The other label is right here, made with love and coffee. And then I have a last label on the inside, which has the washing instructions and says, doing laundry like a real adult, go you. The left panel folds over the right panel so that when you sit at the wheel your stance can be wide and your legs will still be protected. Then I made the decision to have the pocket vertically aligned instead of horizontally aligned. It also allowed for a bit of a bigger pocket which I think now is a very good size. On the other side we then have the towel ring. Obviously you can also hang other things from there. As you saw I added grommets or eyelets. There is a difference and I don't really know which one is which but I added these two, I feel like it looks professional and a bit more sturdy, especially because it's like a work apron. The straps are really, really long, which is nice because then you can wrap it around in the back and then back to the front to make a knot. And then we have the insides, which uh, has the bodice lined in the linen and um, all the seams are finished with a double fold. The angles on the bottom are also really nice and neat. I'm finding all of these threads. And yeah, um, overall, very happy with it. I hope it will fit her, that she will like it. I really enjoyed this little sewing adventure and I really liked having you along. 
Um, I hope you enjoyed it as well. Feel free to ask me any questions about this project in the comments. You can always contact me on Instagram as well. I'm a bit more active on there, so <laughs> you might be more lucky there. Thank you very much for watching, especially if you made it all the way until the end. I really appreciate it. Feel free to drop me a comment and give me some feedback. And if you enjoyed the video, do give it a like and you can always subscribe if you want more videos. All right, I think that's enough for me for today. I hope you will tune in for next time, hopefully sometime soon. Bye bye.